Hi, how's everyone doing? It's been a minute since I've done a video, an update actually of um, any tutorials. So a lot of people actually viewed the Ableton Live 9 with um, the MK3 uh, with the machine controller. And um, obviously 10 changed a few things. So this is an update how we can integrate the machine controller with Ableton 10 and use it as a keyboard or use it as a mixer if we wanted to or anything else. Um, so let's get right to it. I don't want to waste too much time. You guys can follow me on planet1wp.com or prettyhybrid.com. So let's get to it. The first thing that we'll have to do is what we did in Ableton Live 9. It's just a little bit different, but it's still the same thing. Okay, let's go to your Mac hard drive or wherever your library is. We'll go into library here. Okay, then we're going to go into application support. And then we are going to find native instruments here. And we are going to go into host integration. Okay, we're going to open up the Ableton Live folder. Okay, and we're going to copy two things over into the MIDI scripts of the application program. Okay, we're going to copy this folder right here, native instrument underscore native instruments and whichever controller you're using. In my case, I am using the machine MK3. Okay, so I am going to command click on that one. I'm big on shortcuts, guys, so get used to it. This is how we're gonna move it along. Instead of dragging them over, I'm simply just gonna copy them right now by hitting command C, okay? And now they're copied, I'm just gonna open up a new tab here, okay? And I'm going to roll over to the applications, not roll over, but I'm going to go into the applications uh, folder. And here is Ableton Live 10 Suite. I'm using the current version that's out now. And I'll let you guys see what version that is. That is the 10.114. Okay. My operating system is Catalina. So you guys can see it's also the current version. So I am going to control click on this or right click on it just to open up show package contents okay i'm going to go in there i'm going to go inside the contents folder here i am going to then go into the app resources folder and i am going into the midi remote scripts folder in there you guys are going to hit command v for victor just to paste what we copied into this and you guys can see i've already done it i don't want to do it twice but you guys get it so here i'm going to just go into so I can show you guys, let's do date modify. There we go. So there you go, native instruments and machine MK3. Been copied over inside the MIDI scripts folder. Once that is done, we can close out of here and what we'll do is we'll launch Ableton, okay? Remember, when you before you do this uh, copying over, you cannot have Ableton open, it should be closed. So now I'm launching Ableton and um, the next thing we'll have to do is we'll have to go into Ableton's preferences. Again, I like shortcuts, so we we'll use command comma to open up the preferences. And you guys can see the preferences here. And now we'll go into the MIDI tab, okay? And we have to set this control surface to machine MK3, okay? And that's when we copied over the machine MK3 into the MIDI scripts, that's what it actually did. It installed this for us, for us to have it as an option. So select whatever machine version you're using. Again, mine is uh, the MK3, so I'm gonna leave it on the MK3. Your input and your output should be set to none. The lower section here, we're gonna go back to and we're gonna talk about a little bit more because we're gonna be using that section when we, we use the controller as a keyboard, which will be our third option. We are discussing three options today. The first one is just to use it the regular way, which is to use it within the plugin. The second way is to use the controller as a mixer where you can lower your volumes, uh, mute, solo, play and record and so forth. And the third option is to actually use it as a controller to either program um, any instrument within Ableton or to actually program the machine in Ableton, okay? So now that we've done that, if you guys would take a look at the machine MK3, you guys will see that it has changed and now we have it on top where we have the levels that we can change. Uh, let's go to an audio track so you guys can see it better on an audio track. 
And you guys can see that I am lowering and raising the volume of track five. This is track four. I can mute them by holding the mute button here and muting the track that I want. I can also solo them by hitting the solo button here and soloing whatever track I want, as you guys can see on the screen. Okay, so um, I can hit play now. I've turned on my metronome. Let me make sure that it is not too loud for us so it won't hurt our ears. And if I hit play, you guys can see that it will start Ableton. I can also hit record. And since I'm in session view, it's going into record. Okay, and I can hit stop. So that is the second way to use the controller, just as a mixer where you can raise and lower your volumes, mute tracks, solo tracks, start and record Ableton. Great, now um, if we had an instance of Ableton open, the way that you would be able to switch between programming inside that instance and, um, and using it as a controller, uh, let's discuss that. So I'm gonna go into the browser here, command browse, and I am going to uh, select open up an instance of machine. I'm gonna throw it on that track right there. Okay, and here I have, what I wanna do quickly is I want to, as you guys can see, look, the controller quickly changed into the plugin version. So now if I were to program anything, I would actually be programming inside the machine, um, which is cool, I guess. Um, I'm gonna lower the volume, but we are going to discuss how to program in Ableton, not here. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna quickly load some, um, two drum sounds here, two drum groups, and uh, let's do, this. let's do like a quick 909, and group A, group B, we'll do, we'll lower that, we'll lower that. So now we have two groups. Let me make sure that the volumes are not too loud for us. We don't wanna make us deaf in the process. Okay, I'm doing everything inside the machine plugin, okay? Now, if I wanted to switch between working inside the machine plugin now and using it as a controller to control my levels, the way that you would switch between the two would be to hold shift here and then go into the plugin version up here. And you guys can see that now we have two options here. We have the option to use it again as a mixer or the second one to use it inside the machine plugin. That's how you switch between the two. So I'll go back to the top one by using this here knob. I'm gonna hit load and you guys can see that now again, it becomes my controller where I can lower my volumes and I can mute tracks and so forth. Those are two ways, that's pretty cool, but I particularly just wanna use it as a keyboard so I can play uh, my drum rack, I can play maybe bass notes and just everything else, okay? So why don't we just quickly do that, okay? We're gonna go into command comma, okay? And now we're gonna talk about the lower section. We have to make sure that Ableton receives input from the machine virtual input, the machine MK3, which is known as the virtual input. I guess that what, that's what their internal wiring is where the USB will send MIDI information inside of Ableton. So that is a lower section here. Make sure that it receives input from the machine MK3 virtual input, it is on. This track button, track section means MIDI notes or are going to be sent to Ableton because a lot of people confuse that. It, it could be confusing, quite honestly. And then the remote section means we can assign any one of these buttons to control whatever parameter we want in Ableton. So example, I can map this button to this play button, which we're going to do, and the stop button and so forth. If I don't have that on, it won't allow me to assign it. So turn those on. Once we've done that, okay, what we're gonna do here quickly, let's just do a drum rack, for example, okay? And then we'll go back into Ableton. Let's select the 707 here. We'll drop it into a track. Okay, I'm just gonna lower the volume again because I don't know how loud this stuff is gonna be. Um, I have a new system, so I'm working out my kink, so bear with me. Um, you guys can see that I am still in that mixer mode that I was before. I don't wanna be in that mixer mode, so I'm going this time to hold shift and instead of switching between the two options, remember, 
either inside the plugin or using it as a mixer, I'm going to now use it as a MIDI keyboard. So I'm going to hit Shift and MIDI. And you guys can see that now is in MIDI mode. And these are now my octaves. I'm going to start at C3 here. Okay. And you guys can see that now I am controlling the sounds inside side drum rack. Why did I select C3? Because that's where it starts here. You guys can see in the machine. Let me close my browser. You guys can see here in the machine. I mean, I'm sorry, inside the drum rack that when I hit that one on there, I'm triggering the first one. If I go up here, I'm going to be out of range. Okay. So there you go. So now I essentially could use my MK controller to record. So why don't we, before we even record, why don't we do something cool? Why don't we assign these buttons here so we don't have to keep switching back and forth, right? Remember, we turned on the remote and the preferences. That allows us to hit this MIDI button right here and hit this play button, right? I'm going to select that play button and I'm going to hit play. And you guys can see that it's been assigned to that. I'm going to hit the stop button here. Program it to that stop button. This is the record button to the arrangement. I'm in session view, so I'm going to assign the session view record button instead. I'm going to hit record. There we go. And let's, why don't we add the metronome while we're at it? We we'll use the same one that they're using, metronome. There we go. Once we're done with that, let's get out of there. And you guys can see if I hit, sorry, play, it'll start playing. If I hit stop, it'll stop. Okay. And I recorded something there by mistake. So let's do that. So we're going to record like a quick kick. Okay, let's do um, the record button here, and let's go for it. Stop button. Now let's take a look at that, and let's fold it up so we can see the notes. And you guys can see that I've recorded the notes. Let's do a quick quantize, and that first kick was really off. Okay, and now let's play it. Oops, I think I didn't map that play button correctly, so let's go back and fix that. Okay, let's do that again. There we go. Okay, and you see that you, you, you're always going, for me, I, I hit that play button, I kept hitting it, it wasn't working for me. I'm like, maybe I didn't map it correctly. So we're, we're human, we're gonna make mistakes. So if you see something's not working, go back and double check yourself. Hit that MIDI button and double check yourself. So yeah, that is the, w the three ways that we can use Ableton. Uh, we can integrate machine into, with Ableton. The first way is just to use it the regular way, the way that they sold it, so you can use it inside the plugin. It's cute, um, but we want to be able to use the machine MK3. It's a pretty cool controller to do a lot more things than just that. Okay, the second way is to use it as a mixer. You know, maybe we've done the song and we want to use the machine to kind of move levels around, automate stuff. It's pretty cool that way. Then we will switch between both of those situations by holding shift and the plug-in button up here, and you guys can see the two options, either use it as a mixer or use it inside the plugin. And the third way is the one we just talked about right now, which is just using it as a keyboard, and that way we do MIDI, and I mean, sorry, shift, and then we go into MIDI, and it puts it into a keyboard, and these become octaves. We can load any instrument in Ableton, and we can also do it inside a machine. For those that just needed that information, well, you guys are good. You guys can keep moving. But those that want to learn how to actually use the sounds and machines to program them in MIDI clips in Ableton, that's what I'm going to discuss now. So for that situation, I'm going to go into machine. And you guys can look at our earlier video, the one that I had for the Ableton 9. It's pretty much the same steps as well. Okay. So here we are. We're going to open up machine, right? I'm going to open this up here. And we have two kits that I've already loaded. The first thing we want to do is we want to set that group to MIDI notes. Okay? That way, Ableton will recognize every one of these pads as individual notes. Therefore, if you had a kick here, it would see the kick on one note, the snare on another note, and so forth. So you must do that. Second one, the same thing. Assign it to MIDI notes. Once we've done that, we want to go into the input section here. Okay, we can actually do this with the controller, by the way, too. It'll be a lot faster. Okay, so the input, which is the MIDI input, okay, here it has routing, it has drum kit, and it has manual. 
we are going to put it on manual. The reason why we want to put it on manual is because that's where we can assign it a MIDI channel. So every drum kit should have its own MIDI channel. Okay, we can use up to 16 MIDI channels. I'm gonna hit MIDI channel one there. Okay, and I'm gonna go to the second group. I'm sorry, that was the second group, so I'm gonna put the second group on two, just to keep it consistent. The first one again, manual, and that one will be on MIDI channel one. So here I have my 909 kit on MIDI channel one, and my absent A kick on MIDI channel two. That looks good, okay. And again, I'm going just to make sure my levels are low. I don't want to hurt anyone. Good. Once that is done, okay, I am going to go to two tracks on Ableton. This is my main machine, okay. I'm going to set this second track here, okay, to the machine. And that MIDI channel will be MIDI channel number one. The second one here would be the same machine, and it will be MIDI channel number two. We'll start with MIDI channel one, and remember now we just have to change the controller into the keyboard mode and shift MIDI. And you guys can hear that I'm triggering the 909. Move over to the right, and you guys can see that I am now triggering the abstract kick. If I wanted to record, same deal. We already mapped these buttons, which is pretty cool. Let's start with that. And let's give it. Okay, so now let's have a listen. I'm just gonna turn off the 707 we programmed before. Okay, and we only want two bars. Let's do that, and let's quickly quantize it too. Whoops. Okay, and that pickup kick is a little bit off, so let's just add it there. Cool. There we go. So let's play it. Let's get rid of that one. Cool. Now we'll go into the second track here. And I'm just gonna make that kick only play in the while recording. Cool, let's say we love that. Move it over, move it over, and let's have a listen. Let's say we love that, right? So there we go. That is how you are able to program the machine inside using, I'm sorry, using uh, whatever is inside the machine in Ableton. So I hope you guys liked the video. If you have any questions, as always, follow me. I want to let you guys know again that I will be doing live um, podcasts where I'll be sharing uh, tricks and different uh, things, uh, controllers and uh, different tricks in Ableton, Logic, and anything else. So um, it will be an open forum where you guys can ask questions, and I will be starting that next month. So I look forward to seeing you guys um, on there and as well. Uh, continue to do music, and please share my videos. They do help. And subscribe. See you then. Have a great day.